Since the 1990s, antidepressant use in the U.S. has more than tripled. Today, nearly one in six adults takes an SSRI or similar medication. That's not even counting any of the other psychiatric medications like other classes of antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds, sleep medications, and on. And yet, why are the rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide still rising? If these drugs are working, why do so many people still feel numb, disconnected, or just like they're barely treading water through life? In a world where millions are medicated but still suffering, we have to start to ask the question, are we even targeting the right thing? Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Kim Townsend. I'm a licensed medical doctor and psilocybin facilitator, and I help teach about the healing power of psychedelics. Today, I'm going to compare and contrast SSRIs and psilocybin, specifically how they affect the brain in completely different ways and why one helps you to cope while the other helps you to change. Besides their mechanisms of action, I'm also going to compare their side effects and safety profiles as well as practical aspects as to how they are administered and the cost. SSRIs increase serotonin levels in the brain by blocking its reuptake into the presynaptic neuron. This means that more serotonin stays in the synaptic cleft where it can bind to receptors like the 5-HT1A receptor. But the therapeutic effects don't happen overnight. Why? In the short term, the extra serotonin actually stimulates presynaptic 5-HT1A autoreceptors to inhibit further serotonin release, essentially telling the brain to ease off. So this delays the increase in downstream serotonin signaling. It often takes about two to six weeks for these autoreceptors to desensitize, allowing serotonin levels to rise more consistently, which is when many patients can start to feel some relief. But for some people, the effect plateaus over time or fades entirely. And this is something called tachyphylaxis, or more informally, Prozac poop out. Over time, the brain adapts to the medication by downregulating the expression of serotonin receptors or reducing neuroplasticity. So mood flattens, motivation drops, and symptoms can start to creep back in, even while still on the same dose. Psilocybin, once ingested, is rapidly converted in the body to psilocin, which is the active compound that binds directly to 5-HT2A serotonin receptors, which are particularly concentrated in regions of the prefrontal cortex and the default mode network. Unlike SSRIs, which passively increase serotonin levels by blocking its reuptake, psilocin actively stimulates this 5-HT2A receptor, initiating a distinct signaling cascade that disrupts rigid patterns of brain activity. 5-HT2A serotonin receptor signaling leads to loosening of entrenched neural networks that underlie fixed beliefs, trauma patterns, and rumination. Functionally, this results in a state of enhanced neuroplasticity, allowing the brain to form new connections and rewire outdated emotional and cognitive patterns. This is why people report being able to reframe deeply painful memories, feel previously inaccessible emotions, or experience breakthrough insights during or after just one or two psilocybin sessions. The effects are often noticed immediately and continued improvements unfold over several weeks or months after each administration session. Dr. Robin Carhart Harris and colleagues describe this mechanism as promoting active coping, which is in contrast to SSRI's more passive coping mode. In other words, psilocybin doesn't just blunt your emotional pain. It gives you a window of opportunity to confront, process, and release it, often leading to enduring psychological benefits. Now let's compare and contrast the side effects and safety profiles. SSRIs are FDA approved and widely used that do come with well-known side effects such as sexual dysfunction, weight gain, emotional blunting, sleep disruption, and withdrawal symptoms. They also carry a black box warning for increased risk of suicidality when initiating the medication or changing its dose, particularly in young adults. Psilocybin, while still under legal restriction in most places, has shown a strong safety profile. It is non-addictive and physiologically well-tolerated and impossible to overdose on. When approached with proper preparation, set setting and intention, and integration, the risk of serious adverse events is exceedingly rare. There can be minor transient physiological side effects such as nausea or headache during and immediately after the experience, and as for serious adverse psychological events such as psychosis or suicide, there actually have been no reported events in the clinical trials and none reported in the Oregon Psilocybin Services Program where over 10,000 clients have been served, which is more than all of the clinical trials combined. 
SSRIs are inexpensive, accessible, and they're covered by insurance. But when you account for the long-term use, multiple doctor and pharmacy visits for refills, side effects, and the cost of unresolved symptoms, the true cost really does start to add up. Psilocybin therapy does require a larger upfront investment and is currently only accessible legally in Oregon and Colorado. It is still Schedule 1 federally, which means insurance plans don't currently cover any of the costs, so services must be paid out of pocket. That being said, it may be more cost effective in the long run because it doesn't require daily use and it's actually effective at helping to put people into full remission. One or two well-supported sessions can result in several months or years of benefit. SSRIs and psilocybin are not enemies. They just represent vastly different paradigms. SSRIs help you manage symptoms. Psilocybin helps facilitate transformation. And with psilocybin therapy, you get more than just the treatment of symptoms. Psilocybin can catalyze mystical type experiences, ego disillusion, and existential insight, which can be deeply therapeutic and healing for many. People often report feeling more connected, more alive, and more in tune with themselves in the world. Both have their place, but for people who are stuck, disillusioned, and seeking true change, psilocybin may offer something radically different, and that's the potential for lasting transformation. If you're a clinician, a therapist, or somebody who's just trying to heal, this isn't fringe science anymore. This is a true evolution in how we understand the brain, the self, and what it means to heal. If you have any questions at all, please do leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to follow, subscribe for more down-to-earth education about psychedelics.